All right, thanks for watching. And someone who shall not be named suggested that I do more complex analysis. So here's a video on Rouchet's theorem, or as I like to call it, Ferrero Rouchet. All right, and the question is, how many zeros does z to the fifth plus 3z squared plus 1 have in that annulus between 1 and 2? And again, good luck solving for this because there is a theorem that says, in general, you don't have an explicit formula for the roots of this. Um, that said, the cool thing is with this Rouchet's theorem, we can actually at least know how many roots there are in a certain region. And uh, let me state it. Okay, so what does Rouchet say? So suppose you have a region D with a certain boundary, and suppose you have a function that dominates another function in the following sense. Suppose G is smaller than F in absolute value on the boundary. So suppose F dominates G, then what this says is you can perturb F a little bit and still have the same number of roots. More precisely what this says, if F dominates G, then F and F plus G have the same number of roots. The same number of roots. of roots inside the region, so inside the open and bounded region. So again, just to reiterate, suppose f dominates a certain function g, then you can start with f and perturb it with the little function and still get that they have the same number of roots. And why is this useful? Because in practice, the function f is easy and the function g is such that the sum gives us our polynomial. So now you can actually put this into action with our complicated polynomial z to the fifth plus uh, 3z squared plus 1, I believe. Yeah. All right, so now let's go back again to our function z to the fifth plus 3z squared plus 1. And first, let's try to figure out how many roots are there inside the small circle with radius 1. Because remember, we do have this annulus, and the idea is basically the annulus will be the difference of two disks. So let's first try to figure out what happens in the inside disk. So case 1, let's try to figure out in z less than 1. And here's the thing. So Rocher's theorem, it's a, it's a very nice theorem, definitely. but it does involve a little bit of guesswork because the question is which is the dominating function and well it depends on the cases because it turns out here the dominating function is the middle one because probably of the coefficient of three so notice z to the fifth plus three z squared plus one we can write this as three uh, z squared plus uh, z to the fifth plus one. So the idea is this will be, um, sorry, um, yeah, this will be a function f, the bigger function, and this will be the function g. Okay? And all is good except we just need to show that f dominates the function g. So if you take the absolute value of the smaller function g of z, that is z to the fifth plus one, and then this becomes less than or equal to z to the fifth plus one. But since the modulus is small, this is less than one plus one, which is two. But on the other hand, the modulus of f is three. So in fact, this is less than three, which is the absolute value of three z squared, which is f. So in fact, f dominates the function g, but um, the point is f has a very nice number of roots. It's precisely two roots up to multiplicity. But f, which again is 3z squared, has two roots. Okay, in the smaller annulus, in the smaller disk. 
So what this is saying, we have this function of two roots and this smaller function, it will still have the same number of roots. So the sum will also have two roots inside the smaller disk. So So f plus g also has two roots in z less than 1. So we already figured out what happens in the smaller disk, and now we just need to figure out what happens in the larger disk. So z less than 2. And what's interesting here is this kind of switch of roles. Because let's take again our polynomial z to the fifth plus 3z squared plus 1. Well, in this case, well, z to the fifth has a big power. So it turns out this will dominate this in this case. So this be actually becomes z to the fifth plus 3z squared plus 1. So this will be the dominating function. And this will just be the perturbation. And the idea is we know how many roots this has in the bigger one. And then just by perturbation, we know the total number of roots in the smaller one. But of course, let's show that it dominates. So g of z, again, it's absolute value of 3z squared plus 1. Okay, and that's less than or equal to 3z squared plus 1. And so 3 times 2 squared, so 12 plus 1, 13. Well, it is a big number, but it's smaller than this 32, which is absolute value of z to the fifth. z to the fifth, which is absolute value of f of z. So you see this function is clearly bigger than this one in terms of absolute value. So again, the number of roots of this perturbation is just the number of roots of f, which in this case is 5. Okay. So since f has 5 roots, well, again, technically just 0, but with multiplicity 5, we get f plus g also has five roots. In z less than two. Okay, so what have we found? And again, there is a little uh, technicality which I'll address very soon. So we found that inside the big disk, right, z less than two, there are five roots, and inside the smaller disk, there are two roots. Okay. So there are two roots here, and we know there are five roots in total. So technically what this means, well, there must be three roots, but there is one borderline case we still need to watch out for, because what about on the disk z equals 1. There could also be a root here, but I'll just show with some basic algebra that this doesn't happen. So case 3. z equals 1. But again, this can just be eliminated by some algebra because if z to the fifth plus 3z squared plus 1 equals 0, then what we get, we get that 3z squared equals 3z to the fifth minus 1. But now, just take absolute values. So absolute value of 3z squared, because z equals 1, that equals 3. And now, by the triangle inequality, this becomes z to the fifth plus 1 which is 1 plus 1, which is 2, which doesn't make sense. So in particular, there are no roots to my heart. Anyway, there are no roots on the circle z equals 1. So what can we conclude? There are five roots in total, two inside that circle. So in particular, the answer to our question is 3. There are three roots in total in that analysis. 
And you see, that's what's nice about Rouchet's theorem. We never actually found the roots. We just know, again, without doing any problem solving, that there must be three roots here. And that is very, very nice, I think. Um, all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.